Hi and uh, welcome back to our afternoon session at uh, DE NOC 13. Please remember to rate the talks. You'll find the link on the navigation in uh, Venueless. And uh, we will start now with a lightning talk. I'm happy to welcome Moritz Frenzel. He is a uh, senior network architect at um, Annexia by day and uh, is in the board and program committee and orga, com uh, orga of uh, DE NOC and also uh, maintaining the Stuttgart Internet Exchange by night. I'm happy to welcome him um, with the talk and appeal to individual research networks. Thank you, Thank Tim. You. So yeah, uh, I have a quick lightning talk because as I mentioned in the DNOC opening, uh, I should talk about something that is dear to my heart. And so this lightning talk will be a quick appeal. As uh, Tim already stated, um, I am Moritz. I run and operate a network, but not a well-known presenter. Okay, sorry. Let's go back a bit. So yeah, I'm, I'm Moritz. I'm a senior network architect at, at Annexia. Uh, I also do Stuttgart X and DNOC. Uh, you can find me on the IRC or on Twitter. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to send an email to me as well. First and foremost, a disclaimer. Uh, as my t-shirt clearly states, I'm standing here as civilist. I'm not speaking for my employer, neither for DNOC nor for Stuttgart X. Uh, all that I'm saying is my personal opinion, so please keep that in mind uh, should you have any comments about that. So, what is research networks and why is research in, in double quotes? What do I mean by that? What I don't mean first and foremost is individuals or groups doing actual research, meaning universities running measurements, um, people observing the BGP table and, and whatnot. Uh, but what I do mean by research networks, and I couldn't find a better term for that, is individuals researching as in learning how the internet works. So please, this will be the definition I use for research networks in double quotes from now on. Why is this presentation? As mentioned, I'm doing something that is dear to my heart and that is the internet. I want the internet to be stable and secure. And in my day job, uh, I operate networks for some very well-known services and those services have been hijacked by these research networks in the past, not in malintent, but out of curiosity or due to lack of knowledge. Those hijacks then spread amongst the smaller IXPs and transits of those research networks because they often tend to mesh quite a bit and have found their own communities, which is great, which I appreciate very much. Um, but those hijacks sh should not have spread because they were IRR invalid and they were RPKI invalid. But still, they did. And so it was an intention for me to give this presentation. The appeal then. I really appreciate that people are learning about BGP, about the internet. It is something that is also dear to my heart and is one of the main reasons why I'm organizing DNOC and being so engaged here, because I want people to learn and not make mistakes like calling BGP the bridging gap protocol. But we have to put this a bit in context. Um, First and foremost, I would ask everyone that is learning how the internet works to consider if this should be really be done in public on a public ASN. If you want to use bigger networks than you have available at home, you can use GNS3, EFNG, VRNetLab, Verl, or any other uh, network simulation software which allows you to run virtual VMs of different vendors and you can experiment a lot there and learn a very much. But I get it, there is an appeal to actually operate a network, to interact with others, to get real world examples. But is the public internet really the place for that, for learning, for making big mistakes that might spread through whole, throughout the whole internet? I think there are better solutions, like DN42. DN42 is a VPN which you can join and then experiment with dynamic routing protocols with others. Obviously, you don't get a full table, but you don't need 500,000 routes to learn or whatever, a million routes to learn how the internet works and how to network with others. But there are other ASNs. You can send them peering requests. You can peer with them, build your own peering policies and so on. And they actually have a great community around that, but it's not part of the public internet. Why am I making this appeal? Well, my presenter is dying again. I'm sorry about this. So, um, sorry, can you go one slide back? Uh, now my presenter is working again. So, 
As one of the great philosophers of that, our time, Spider-Man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Or, to put it in context, with the public ASN comes great responsibility. If you are operating a public ASN, and I know this is also not the right word, just as research networks is not, um, you should try your very best to be a good netizen and implement manners actions. And this actually takes quite some knowledge. So, you should, and at the very top, prevent the propagation of incorrect routing information. What does this mean? Make explicitly sure that you filter outgoing announcements, meaning only announce networks that, um, that you own, that you operate. So have a prefix list that exactly limits everything you can announce to your own ASN. It's also a good idea that if you want to learn how prefix X works, it's not a great idea to use your public ASN and route your prefixes there because if you use IP addresses that don't belong to you in some network statements, the chances are very high of you actually leaking them to someone. Also, obviously, ensure that received prefixes are filtered and that you validate RPKI, both on the routes you receive, but also on the routes you announce. Next, of course, prevent traffic with, source, uh, with spoof source IPs. If this is a network you operate for yourself, this may be a bit negligible, but Nevertheless, it's an important uh, action. This one is also something that is very, very important to me, especially as an appeal to those individuals. Facilitate global operational communication coordination. What does that mean? Well, make sure that others can reach you promptly. In most cases, a 24-7 knock with a phone numbers are a good practice. I know, you're an individual. You are operating this network for learning purposes but you are participating in something global, something that is always on, and so you should make sure to be always reachable. If you go that route, then at least buy a burner phone, uh, drop it in your backpack, make sure it's always on. Those Nokia phones from back then hold batteries for weeks, and make sure that others can reach you at any time, because if you break something, others will notice, and it will be way easier for you to fix this than to others to circumvent your mistakes. Also, facilitate routing information on a global scale, so make sure your IRRDBs and such are up to date. Uh, and also publish ROAS for your objects. And if you are interested in that and are considering running a public ASN, then please, before you do that, read about each action in more detail on manners.org. There are great workshops by manners, and you can find more information there. So, that's all from my side. Please be considerate when uh, networking with others. Try not to network uh, in the public internet if you don't have to. And if you have to, or if you really see the necessity for it, make sure you're reachable at any time and that you are a good netizen. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Moritz, uh, for the talk. Um, indeed, we don't have any uh, questions left in the questions tab. There was a little bit uh, chatting that um, uh, we probably shouldn't uh, stop at the individual research networks, but also educate um, other companies uh, participating in the internet, but that's um, beyond this talk. So, um, from me, I would uh, say no questions there. So, thank you very much for your talk. And to the audience, please rate the talks and um, we will welcome you in for the next talk in a few seconds. Thank you.